Thank you for watching. My name is Glenn Morgan and this is We The Govern. Today we're going to be talking about fish culverts, taxes, and corruption, and how all these things fit together in one story. Okay, we are going to look at Washington State, and specifically the Washington State Legislature and political leadership here, and the topic of the day is going to be about fish culverts, taxes, and corruption. It sounds like a strange combination of topics, but it'll make sense as we move forward. The other way I thought about describing today's presentation is just going to be about why solving problems is never going to be big government's goal. And uh, it'll become apparent as we move forward here. So this really came out of an article I wrote uh, a little uh, on April Fool's Day, actually, earlier this month. And it was initially just focused on why we should use April 1st, April Fool's Day, as the optimal day to celebrate government in all its wonder and glory. But uh, as I went into it, I decided to describe just a situation in Washington, uniquely Washington situation, that really illustrates why government is run by fools. And uh, it starts really with the salmon. Salmon is an iconic uh, part of Washington state heritage, history, and symbolism for the entire Pacific Northwest. And uh, this really comes, it involves salmon and it also involves culverts. In order for salmon, uh, which migrate upstream to lay their eggs, and any school child that goes to school in Washington State understands the entire life cycle of the Washington State salmon. Uh, in fact, they probably know that better than they know math and English. But uh, part of this is when salmon have to go upstream, they oftentimes have to go and bypass roads, uh, whether that be forest roads or freeways or anything else. And in order for them to do that, they have to go underneath those roads. Generally, they're going to go through culverts. And a lot of the culverts in Washington State have been subpar or not adequate enough to allow for adequate fish passage. The salmon couldn't get up. And so there have been some fights over the last 40 or 50 years in regards to optimal fish habitat and when you're building roads. And uh, the idea is that when you're building a new road, now you want better fish habitat to allow for more water flow and something like this. This photo is actually from Oregon, but uh, more of what they call a box culvert so that the salmon can go upstream or downstream uh, pretty easily. And it actually helps for flood control. And there's some other benefits as well. However, there's also a major lawsuit that has been in the works, uh, slow winding its way through multiple cases through federal court. And it really started significantly, it came out really out of the Bolt decision from the 70s, which I don't really have time to get into here. But ultimately, and more recently, there was a 2007 case where all 21 tribes in Washington state, uh, in conjunction with the federal government, sued Washington state and Washington state lost this lawsuit, saying that uh, it was the state government's responsibility to replace these culverts, the older uh, culverts that existed, uh, not just as a matter of course, but they had to go back and actively take them all out and replace them with bigger culverts. Now, Washington State sat on that judgment, did nothing. And then in 2013, after Attorney General Bob Ferguson was elected in 2012, uh, there was a more significant lawsuit, which federal lawsuit, which demanded that uh, they have an accelerated timetable uh, to replace these culverts and that they define this uh, timetable. Now, Bob Ferguson lost this case. I mean, first you had the 2007 case, and then you had this 2013 case. And A.G. Bob Ferguson prides himself on going after his political enemies and beating up on them in court when they don't have any resources to defend themselves. However, when faced with a significant litigation like this with the real attorneys, he tends to lose, which is what he did. And he continued to lose all the way up to the Supreme Court, when in 2018, the federal Supreme Court ruled against Washington State and Bob Ferguson, saying that uh, the state had to step in and replace hundreds of these culverts by 2030. So they attach a time frame to it. Now that time frame, of course, leads to some pretty serious decision making. The Supreme Court has spoken. The state is obligated to resolve this. And this involves the governor having to make a decision because ultimately he's going to have to sign off on any budget and build that budget into the planning purposes. And of course, Bob Ferguson, with his uh, continuous losing streak in this litigation, they're going to have to find some kind of a solution. And they have to work with the legislature to do so. And that means working with uh, uh, Andy Billig, who's out of Spokane, who's the leader in the state Senate, and uh, Lori Jenkins who's a speaker of the House from Tacoma. And both houses, the Senate and the, the, Rep, the House of Representatives in Washington State, are controlled by Democrats, and they have been since this case was uh, lost in 2013. 
So they're in charge of the budget and they're able to put together a budget or some kind of way of solving this problem. But unfortunately, the cost of solving and uh, getting this liability uh, off the backs of the taxpayers in Washington state have been escalating. And initially there was a big fight. Uh, the first initial estimate was that it was gonna be about $1.8 billion in 2018. And that's what the Department of Transportation said that it was going to cost. But there's a big fight. Does it come out of the transportation budget or does it come out of the capital budget? Well, ultimately, the transportation budget committee lost that fight. It's stuck in the transportation committee. That's going to be the budget that it comes out of. And it just keeps escalating. Nobody's actually wanted to try to do anything to reduce this liability or solve it, and nobody in the political leadership anyway. And so it's uh, a couple years later, it was uh, t up to $2.8 billion. And now the most recent budget announcement by the State Department of Transportation is it's $3.4 billion. That's becoming a significant and serious liability. This is a lot of money. It's actually one of the largest legal liabilities that uh, has been placed on the back of Washington state taxpayers for a long time. And then it suddenly started raining money from Washington, D.C. with the Biden administration. Suddenly, with the CARES Act II coming down, $13 billion was going to rain on Washington state. It was going to be unlimited money, manna from heaven. This was going to solve all of our problems because of that $13 billion, it looks like about $6 billion or so could be used to actually solve this tremendous liability that sits on the backs of taxpayers right now. You could take just a little over half of that, at least according to the State Department of Transportation, and you could solve this major liability. That's a big deal. I mean, that's kind of an answer from heaven. Biden came in and delivered. And so all this money is coming to Washington State. And you would think that that would be a happy time in Washington State and that the legislature would find this to be the answer to the big and pressing problem of solving these culverts. But this is coming back to the crux of the story and why we're doing this video in the first place, because solving problems is never the priority of government. It's not their goal. Big government's goal is never to solve those problems. In fact, it's to make sure they don't get solved. And this is despite the fact that the tribes have actually been pushing for this uh, resolution, getting these culverts changed to help the salmon habitat for decades. This has been a big cause for celebration for them when they won this lawsuit. And you see a picture here, Governor Inslee to the left and, uh, and then uh, Senator Sam Hunt there pretending like they're down with the struggle and that they're going to be uh, with the tribes on this and everything else. And instead, they've decided to give the shaft to the tribes to ignore their concern and ignore their victory and make sure that no money at all has gone to solve any of these, this culvert liability. And they do this because the tribes, 95% of the money the tribes have been putting in for the last 30, 40 years of elections have all gone to the Democrats. Uh, it doesn't go to Republicans. The tribes haven't been giving any money to the Republicans. They don't support them. And so the tribes have put themselves sort of on a, the Democrat reservation, and the Democrats have them where they want them. They don't want, they, don't, they feel like they don't have to help the tribes because the tribes are going to keep giving them money anyway. And as long as they be quiet and just sit over there, um, then uh, the uh, Democrats can keep cashing those checks and ignoring the concerns of the tribes. And that's kind of where we find ourselves right now because the goal is not to solve the problem. The goal is only to make it worse. But the question is why? And that's a great question. Why shaft one of your long-term uh, you know, support, support groups? I mean, these tribes have generally been very supportive of the Democrats, financially at least, for a long time. And yet, the Democrats seem quite happy to shaft them and not give them any money. Well, it's because... They don't want to solve the problem, and the reason why the, the Democrat Party and the political leadership in Washington State doesn't want to solve this problem is because if they don't solve it, they can let it grow and become bigger and bigger, wait till that clock runs down and there's just not much time left, and now it's a total panic and emergency, and therefore that becomes the perfect excuse for them to use to actually add another tax, maybe a carbon tax, maybe double the gas tax, maybe come up with something else that they can uh, force the taxpayers to pay. I mean, come on, we see them do this all the time with the Ponzi scheme of light rail, with uh, uh, education, with all kinds of different things. So that's what they're doing with these fish culverts even though that problem could be solved with the resources they have. And we tend to think that because these people are elected officials, that there's some level of seriousness behind who they are and what they do. Uh, Governor Jay Inslee and Attorney General Bob Ferguson, they must be serious people trying to solve serious problems. 
But that's not really an accurate reflection of who they are. In fact, this image here represents more accurately their approach to problem solving with silent Governor Jay Inslee and Bob Ferguson sitting there uh, looking at the camera, really pretty unserious about solving anything and any of the problems that face us. As long as they get their cut of the campaign contributions and the votes that they need to get reelected, they're not going to care much about anything else. And that, unfortunately, also applies with the leadership, quote-unquote leadership, that exists in the state Senate and the state House. Neither Senator Andy Billig or Speaker Lori Jenkins or any of her caucus members, which control both houses right now, have an interest in solving this problem because getting that tax, those tax dollars, or at least coming up with an excuse to, to, to deliver those, is far more important to them. Any excuse that they can use to extract money from you and I and every other taxpayer in Washington State for whatever uh, schemes or dreams they might have, that's a higher priority than anything else. Don't solve the problem. Make it worse. Let it fester. Let it get really bad. And if they can create it and turn into enough of a crisis, they can use it as an excuse to get more of your tax dollars. Unfortunately, that just seems to be the way things are going. And the only way to change that is to change the political leadership. There's no other option. If the Republicans were more effective and less spineless in how they oppose some of these programs, or at least provided better solutions, then, uh, then they ha would have that potential to step in, or some of them would, to step into those leadership roles. But we'll have to see, ultimately, that's up to the taxpayers and uh, up to the voters of Washington State to decide what they're going to do. And yet, in this case, with these culverts, it's so clear that the solution is sitting in their lap. That is sitting there. There are tons, there's plenty of money. Normally I would never say that, but there actually is. It may be funny money, it may be goofy money, it may be ridiculous that the feds have given us this much money, but that money has been given to us. And it serves as another example to demonstrate that no matter how much money government has, they will never solve the problems that they claim to be trying to address. That's not their goal. The goal is not to solve those problems. The goal is to let those problems get worse and faster and justify getting more of our tax dollars so they can expand their power and their money and the control that they currently have. And it's a sad state of affairs. But to change that, it starts with you and I and everybody else around us, our neighbors and our friends and our community, to start changing who represents us and what they are doing when they get to places like Olympia. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about this story or any others, please go to uh, We the Governed. And if you want to leave a comment, you think I missed something, I'm sure that you have plenty of other examples that are similar, uh, please add that in the comment section below. I do read all of them and I try to get back to them. If you like what you see here, please share it and subscribe and uh, make sure others know. Sometimes we are victims of censorship and we don't know uh, how to get that word out when they've censored us down. It's really up to you to share it with others. Uh, also, uh, remember that the future ultimately belongs to those who show up.